Welcome to Dublin Coffin Cross Country. I'm Greg King, the head girls coach. And I'm Joe DePalma, the head boys coach. And uh, uh, oh, go ahead, Joe. We're here virtual today. Normally we would do this in person, but obviously uh, because of the circumstances, we're going to send you guys a video here. Um, so our assistant coaches couldn't be here. Catherine Slavin is the assistant boys coach. And Megan Dute is the assistant girls coach. Um, one of the big things in here is you can get all of this information um, and you can find out lots of stuff about the team at coffincrosscountry.us. It is a combined track and cross country page. So the uh, if when you go on there, click on the cross country sub page to find out information specific to cross country. And we'll move on here. Joe, you want to take this? Yeah, so um, one of the things that we need you to do this summer before we start our official practice in August is to make sure that you sign up for final forms. Um, it's the same process as middle school was. Um, you'll go to the website listed, dublinoh.finalforms.com. Uh, you want to make sure you sign up your kid uh, and make sure you pick the right sport. So make sure you click either boys cross country or girls cross country. And then you need to have a valid uh, physical on file with the athletics office. Um, and that is a mandatory requirement for the first day of practice. Um, we can't let you practice until uh, you have a valid physical. Okay. So our training philosophy, um, and Joe and I have you know, worked together for a long time now and have pretty similar training philosophies. We're a moderate to low mileage program, and our and our program has had a lot of success with this. Our focus is on kids getting better over the course of a season and over the course of their careers. Because we're a moderate mileage program, one of the key things it's it's important for kids to do what we ask them to do at the paces we ask them to do. You can't skip a lot of mileage in this program and still get the benefit. And by the same token, doing a lot of extra stuff is just likely to end up with kids being injured instead of getting faster. Um, we've got to run the paces that when we're in workouts and get a pace, we want you to run, try to run those paces. When it's an easy run, it should be easy. We follow a progressive plan with athletes increasing their mileage each year um, as they go up so that as they get stronger and they've done more training, they can handle, tend to be able to handle more mileage. And for some athletes, we'll find, you know, they may make a jump from 35 miles a week to 40 miles a week and they start getting injured. And we just go back to 35 and keep them there because not everybody adapts to the higher mileage as well. This is particularly true for summer when we don't, in this summer in particular, we won't have direct access to trainers. So we need you to do the mileage that we've asked and not more. Um, one of the big things that you can help us with your kids is knowing the difference between being sore and pain from an injury. Soreness happens as you're training, especially when you're starting training and you haven't been doing it for a while. The, uh, and it's gradually getting better. Injuries hurt and it still hurts when you start running. It doesn't loosen up as much. And particularly when it starts getting worse rather than better over time. So encourage kids to talk to us and reach out to us, even when we can't see them face to face, to email us um, so that we can give them advice and help keep them healthy and have them have a positive experience. We'd rather you err on the side of caution. Um, we found that we, if you're on the line and you're healthy, you're going to run pretty well, um, rather than trying to force yourself through to run through an injury. It doesn't usually work out well. Yeah, we've had way more athletes who ended up with running fast times off of a little bit less training because they we've backed off and kept them healthy um, than athletes who just tried to train through it. And typically, even if you can run, you're not running fast. So, um, going in along with that, then our expectations, our season expectations. Um, as of right now, um, the first official practice will start, I think it's maybe Monday, August 3rd this year, um, and it, we will start originally in the morning, um, and then once school starts, if school starts, um, 
will progress to starting re- immediately after school around 3 p.m. Um, out by the stadium side of the, the Kaufman. Um, when we first start practice, it's going to be really, really hot. It's August, um, especially if we're running in the afternoons. When school starts, it can be really humid, really hot. So it's very important to make sure that we drink lots of water um, and that we're taking care of our bodies. Um, we need you to get a good pair of running shoes. Um, that goes back to the injury um, thing that Greg was talking about. Without the right proper pair of shoes, it's really easy to get injured. Um, we do have a jump in mileage from middle school, um, and most kids adjust pretty quickly to it, but not having the right shoes can be an immediate cause for injury. Um, so if you go to Columbus Running Company or um, Front Runner or um, really any shoe running place, they'll have someone there that if you talk to them, tell them you're going to do cross country in the fall, they'll help you pick out the appropriate shoes for you. Um, that fit your feet. Um, We have a a schedule that we're building right now. It's still in uh, um, process. We're almost there. It's going to look very similar to our schedule from last year. I think the one exception is last year we went to Dublin Jerome's Celtic Clash, um, but this year that is an evening meet and it is on the day of homecoming. So we'll be going, uh, we believe, to Lancaster instead. Um, most of the meets that we go to, or almost all the meets that we go to have multiple races, um, where they're broken up into varsity race and JV race. Sometimes they're broken up into varsity race, JV race, and then freshman, sophomore race or uh, 11, 12 JV, freshman, sophomore JV. Um, but fortunately for us, everyone can run at every meet up until the conference meet or up through the conference meet. Um, after the conference meet, the district meet, um, we in the past have been able to invite a few athletes, um, up from our JV team to run. Um, but then it becomes just varsity team members who can compete. Um, as of right now, our, um, pro- uh, our season is planned to go off, um, like we said, August 3rd. But obviously, with the uh, threat of COVID, we, we don't really know what it looks like, um, and we're not sure what to expect. Um, so the season could be shortened. It could be uh, pushed back. It could be moved up. We don't know. Um, so we ask that you just um, try and keep flexible with us, and we're, that's the attitude we're going to take with this, is that we'll roll with the punches and adjust as it comes. Um, one thing I think I missed out on mentioning was how to earn a varsity letter. Um, for the boys, uh, you have to either break 18 minutes or run 18 minutes flat or run in half of the varsity races um, or just the OCC and district meets um, on the varsity team. And for the girls, it's 21:30 that you have to run. Um, and then the same rules with the uh, varsity races. Um, Greg, I don't know how many girls you had uh, freshman girls, you had letter, but I think you had several and we had several freshman boys letter last year. Um, and I think our, we're going to get to it here in a little bit, but I think a lot of that could be attributed to, they were hardworking groups that did a lot of, um, the mileage in the summer. Yeah. I think we had five freshman girls letter last year. So, and five the year before. So, Next up, uh, cross country boosters. And when we have, uh, there'll be, when we do our QA, there'll probably be somebody from the boosters there to answer questions. And when we have our meeting for all parents um, in August, somebody from the boosters will be there. The boosters buy our uniforms. They help us sometimes with new equipment like new tents. They organize the weekly before meet pasta parties. So we encourage you to join the boosters. And the cross country booster president is Doug Loins, and that's his email there. Uh, traditionally, we've done summer running as a group, um, and it's optional um, at the school. Right now, we're in in question mode. The last we heard was that it will be at least until June 30th until we can um, run together as, as a team um, in summer running. However, uh, we are now hearing that that may end up being earlier. We'll keep you up to date. 
Um, but we do have summer mileage that's strongly suggested, but not mandatory by any means. We ask that you do as much as you can with it. Um, it's posted on the, uh, or it will be posted on the Kaufman webpage, the Kaufman Cross Country webpage. Um, and it's broken down by grade level. So our incoming freshmen should do the freshman mileage. Um, and as we said earlier, it's really important to do um, only what's prescribed for you and at the pace that is prescribed. If you go out and try and do too many miles or too fast of miles, um, it's going to end up likely resulting in an injury. So we just want to um, make sure that you are getting in shape. Um, I think the cross country season for uh, most people is about 20 weeks long if you count summer. Um, and summer's about eight or nine weeks of training. So that means that almost half of our season's training would be summer. Um, so it's really important to get those summer mileage in if you want to be successful and, and um, have the best season that you can. Um, we will break down what the different paces mean um, and how to do warm-ups and how to do strides and everything that you need to know. Um, we have some captains that will help share that information as well. Um, there is a Strava group that a couple of our captains started for the Kaufman team. Um, it's an app, uh, and you can record your mileage on there if you so wish. Um, it's completely optional, but you can see the link there, or you can search Dublin Kaufman. Okay. So, expectations. Um, first off, Dublin City Schools has an extra extracurricular code of conduct that's 24-7-365. It's all day, every day, all year long. Um, and part of that is that you, as an athlete, you're agreeing not to use illegal drugs, not to drink alcohol, not to smoke tobacco. Part of it is that you're agreeing to be a good citizen um, and to not get into the kind of trouble that reflects badly on you and your family and the cross country team. So both, both substance use and citizenship violations of the code of conduct. A first violation is, is uh, you lose 25% of your season and any leadership positions. Second violation is 50% of a season. And third violation is you're done with all extracurriculars in Dublin schools for the rest of your time in school. So it's basically saying do the right thing. And one important thing to, to note is that there is one caveat in there or exception. If you're having trouble athletes with substance abuse, you can come to a coach or a counselor or a teacher and make a self referral before you get, this has to be before you're, you know, you're caught with it and say that you're having trouble. And then you can do some classes on it to help you with that problem. And as long as you successfully complete them, you won't face the that first consequence of a of losing a quarter of a season. Um, we expect athletes to be at practice every day, giving a good effort. We have an attendance policy that's on the web page. Um, if you're sick, or if you have a doctor's appointment, if you are meeting a teacher for tutoring, or if you have to take a make a makeup test, those are excused things, and that's fine. Um, you know, let us know. If a kid's sick and out of school, it's perfectly fine. We don't need to, to email us or call us. We'll see them on the absence list. But if somebody, you know, gets sick at school, um, well, that'll be on the absence list too. If, if somebody's got to be out for a doctor's appointment or after school or orthodontist appointment, or if you've got to go take a makeup test, just let us know so that we'll know. And you can be late or miss practice if that's what's required. Um, the, uh, Things that are not excused are things like work is not an excuse for missing. Um, the uh, getting your hair done for for homecoming is not an excuse to miss. Um, Driver's the, Ed. Go ahead, Joe. Driver's Ed. That's one yeah. we get a lot. Driver's Ed is not an excuse. So please schedule your Driver's Ed around practice. The first missed unexcused absence, we're going to talk to the athlete. Um, about it the second time we're going to contact home and, and that's important too. like them being there is not just for us it's you're expecting to be there and a few times in the past I've had athletes who said they were going out for a sport and didn't and their parents didn't know where they were um, and the third time will be you'll be asked to turn in your uniform and be done um, 
usually it's not a problem for the most part kids you know let us know and and things are fine the uh the one other problem we do face sometimes is sending people out on a run and like hey you're supposed to go run four miles or five miles today and people jog around the corner and then walk down to a park and they goof off and don't do the workout um or we're gonna go do a a workout on the grass and suddenly you're just not there. That's the same thing as cutting practice. You can't show up at the start, check in and then just disappear or not do the workout. And it's important. It's not just, we want to make you do it. If you're not doing the workouts, you're not going to be in shape to race races. It's not safe and healthy to do that. So it's the same thing as skipping if you do that. So please just don't. It's a painful conversation when we have to when we have to have a conversation with you about you goofing off and not doing what you're supposed to at practice. And it's an even more painful conversation for you when it's with your parents too. So again, for most kids, it's not a problem. Just please know that this is the expectation. And so going along with that, um, we do have a performance standard that, uh, is a requirement to meet in August, um, which, Summer running generally uh, helps and helps you hit that that um, standard if you're doing the summer running. Um, about two years ago, I think two or three years ago, our boys team hit 105 or 106 athletes. Um, there was only two coaches, a head coach and an assistant coach, um, so we could only have two buses, and two buses can only hold 80 some kids. So we were leaving um, close to 20 kids home from um, each meet. Um, and so we had to rotate which kids couldn't come to the meets. Um, it was a lot to, to deal with, and we felt like it was unfair to those kids who were um, putting in the time, came coming for summer running, um, trying their best each day, um, and we didn't feel like every kid on the team was doing that. Um, so with that, we we do have a summer or a, a, a performance standard Um you get two chances to hit the performance standard. We'll do it in August um, before the school year starts. Um, we'll have our first trial um, after maybe a week of practice or so on a good weather day. Um, it will be a four-mile run. And then uh, if you don't hit that standard, we do want to give you another chance so you're not immediately off the team or anything. You can continue to train with us for uh, another week or two. Um, and then we'll have another chance for you to try to hit that standard. Um, for the boys, uh, freshmen, it's 37 minutes for a four-mile run. And for the girls, freshmen, it's 41 minutes for a four-mile run. And we feel confident that um, if you are doing the summer running, you'll be able to um, get that time um, and, and – our goal is not to discourage anyone from coming out. We just want to make sure that everyone is in shape um, so we don't have anyone getting sick at the beginning of the year or, or you know, potentially putting their health in danger um, and so that everyone is getting the fair attention on the team that they deserve. So thanks very much. And we are going to uh, – to send out an announcement about a Q and a session. We'll set up a Google meet where you'll be able to log in and ask us questions about the, any of the stuff we went over in this video or things that we didn't go over. So yeah. thank you. Thank you very much.